Hi, this is Jerry from AppDataWorks, LLC. Today I'm going to show you how to allow remote desktop connections from outside of your home or um, office network. network. So first you, the thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enable remote access on each PC that you want to access from outside your home or office. So on this computer, on any computer, what you're going to want to do is uh, get to uh, the properties of, of com your computer. You're going to want to click Remote Settings here and you are going to want to make sure allow connections from computers running any version of uh, remote desktop. Windows 8 looks a little different, uh, but basically that's the setting. You can try using the NLA or the network level authentication option. Um, I don't use it, but it, you can try that if you feel that that'll be more secure. Um, you can select specific users and say only those users are, allow are allowed to access uh, from outside. So you're going to enable that, okay? Then you're going to enable the firewall. So uh, you want to make sure the firewall is enabled for remote connections. So we'll open the control panel. We'll go to Windows Firewall. And we will allow, click Allow a Program or Feature through Windows Firewall and find Remote Desktop in the list. And there you go. That's it. Remote Desktop. That's enabled. You want to do not enable it for public networks. Just enable it for, enable it for your home or work networks. And uh, that's it. And click OK. And then you're done. OK. So we've done that. And now we want to set, make sure we have a fixed IP address on the computer. Now, I always had a fixed IP address, but I made it um, dynamic for the sake of this uh, tutorial. And I will show you, uh, we're going to create a, a fictitious address, um, not the one I normally use. We're also going to use fictitious port numbers, uh, not, not the ports that I normally use. It'll make it a little bit more difficult for people out there watching this video to try to get into my network. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to get into the control panel and network and sharing center. Click on change adapter settings. Get the local area connection. And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the IP addresses of the DNS servers and the default gateway that already exist on this dynamic or yeah, dynamically uh, uh, set IP address. So we'll click, uh, right click and click status and then we click details and this is going to tell us what we need. So the IPv uh, IP address is assigned by my router. Okay, uh, We're going to be changing that. We don't need that right now. What we need is we need the default gateway and we need the, to write down the primary and secondary um, DNS server numbers. So, all right, so we've got that, we've written them down, and we're gonna close that, and now we're gonna go into um, setting the actual IP address, okay? We're gonna get into the properties of this connection, we're gonna get into the IPv4 internet protocol version four uh, settings, and we're gonna set up an IP address. Uh, I've already predetermined the one I'm gonna use is one, Nine two one six eight one dot one three zero, and uh, the subnet mask will be the default, and the default gateway is one nine two one six eight one one, and now we're going to put in those uh, DNS servers that we put in before six five three two five seven four and six five three two five seven five. And we click OK, we click Close, we click Close, and now our IP address is changed. There you go. OK. So now that we've done that, we're going to open up the router and we're going to um, configure the router. Now I have an address bar down here, but you can just open up Internet Explorer and type into the address, or Chrome and type into the address bar, the default gateway IP address um, of your router and open that up. You should have a username and password already configured and please change it from the default to um, something else if you are using the default. All right, so one of the, every router is different. Let's just look at this for a second. In, in my particular router, um, it's under firewall. And on the, my router at home, it says gateway. So you're gonna have to poke around because what you're basically looking for is this right here. You're looking for something called forwarding. Now in this router, it's a single port for forwarding, 
And on the, my router at home, it says just forwarding. Uh, and it's a completely different router. That's a UB router. But almost every router in existence is going to have a way for you to create port forwards like this. So you click forwarding. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an RDP. We're going to use the external port of 12345, which will be the... Um, you're basically obscuring the real RDP port, which is 3389, so that users on the Internet can't just try to get into 3389 um, because you have it open. You're going to actually be opening up 12345 in this case, and, and this router will translate it to 3389. Uh, we're going to put in the IP address of the machine, which was 192.168.1.1. One one thirty. That's this machine that I'm working on right now. And I also have another machine on the network we're going to use to um, to uh, test. Okay, because um, I can't log right into this machine from this machine using going through through the remote IP. It'll just create an endless loop, and it wouldn't be allowed. So we're going to. I already set up an IP address which is fictitious. Uh, it's only temporary. I'm going to set it back to its normal number later. Um, but it's uh, 192.168.1.131. Okay, so what I'm basically telling the router is, is if this port comes in, if this report request comes in, forward it to the RDP port for this IP address. If this port number comes in, forward it to the IP address, to the RDP address, for this IP address. Let's enable those and save. We basically set it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to connect to it from this PC. We'll be connecting through the internet to another PC in this office, okay? Uh, by just simply using the, the proper IP address and uh, port. So we open up remote desktop and we put in the IP address and port that's for this network, uh, this is the external IP address, so it's going to have to go out to the internet and come back in to make this connection. And it's asking me for a username and password. Um, you can ignore this because the computer certificate is invalid, but you can ignore that because you know you're con connecting to a co one of your own computers. And there we go. I'm connected to that computer. Okay. But let's just try it again. Let's let's connect to a different computer. I'm going to disconnect from here. And let's go connect to another computer on my network. So I just connected to another computer on my network. And from there, I'm going to to the same. This is uh, 23456, which is the, uh, the external port number that gets translated by the router. And there you go. Okay, so now I'm actually connected to this uh, Jerry Widow 7 to connect to the same computer over the internet. All right, so that's it. That's how you do it. And um, now I can connect to these office computers, at least two of them, the one I'm sitting at and the, and the other one from outside. J that just goes to show you how, um, how simple it is to, um, to set up these remote, uh, remote connections.